Hello there and welcome to tonight's inspiring edition of What's Your Story. My name is Catherine Mwangi. I am glad as always that you have made this appointment booking to watch tonight's episode because why? So the year is starting afresh, right? We've just covered two weeks and this is week number three. So the idea was who can we have on the show this early in the year that we can learn from, glean a thing or two so that, you know, we, are, we have direction and our paths are could I just say straight paths into 2024 and who better than Dr. Manu Chandaria. We are at his residence and so grateful to him and his family for giving us the leeway to just come do his story from here. So this will be a two part series because he, he's 95 years old. There is so much richness and fullness to this gentleman that I'm looking forward to just getting to know who is he? What has his journey been like? What can we learn? What can we apply so that our 2024 is all the more better, maybe fuller even? You know, who knows what we glean from the conversations today. So let's go. Dr. Manu Chandaria is a Kenyan business mogul born in Nairobi in 1929. He has been hailed as one of Kenya's leading industrialists. He's a former chairman of the Comcraft Group of Companies, a billion dollar enterprise that has a presence in over 40 countries and is on the boards of several prominent East African companies. He has won several awards in recognition of his entrepreneurial endeavors and is also a noted philanthropist. In 2003, Dr. Chandaria was awarded the Order of the British Empire, OBE, by the late Queen Elizabeth II. In December of the same year, he was awarded the Elder of the Burning Spear, EBS, by former President Mwai Kibaki. This is one of the highest civilian honors in Kenya. Dr. Chandaria is a committed Jain and in fulfillment of the principles of Jainism, his family set up the Chandaria Foundation to further this belief. The Chandaria family has set up charitable trusts in the 40 countries they have presence in. As the chairman of Chandaria Foundation, he's at the forefront of the charitable work of the family. In 2022, Dr. Chandaria was awarded the Carnegie Medal of Philanthropy in recognition of innovative philanthropy and his contributions to the society in general. As a peacemaker, Dr. Chandaria is a member of the Global Leadership Council and the patron and chairman of the Global Peace Foundation in Africa. He has spoken in all Global Peace Festival conventions since 2010 and played a very crucial role in Kenya's hosting of the Global Peace Convention in 2010. In 2013, the Global Peace Foundation in Kenya under his chairmanship was nominated for the UN Person of the Year Award for its role in empowering the youth through entrepreneurship and a culture of service. Dr. Chandaria is married to Mrs. Aruna with whom he has two children, three grandchildren and one great grandchild. This is the story of Dr. Manu Chandaria. We are so grateful, sir, that you have welcomed us into your home. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, so 95 years old. Yes, I think that age seems to be catching up. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, I never thought mm -hmm. that I will be that old. Oh. But then my elder brother, is still surviving, is still living. He's about a year and a half or three quarter older than me. So that makes him, what, 96, 97? Yeah. Really? Yeah. He lives in Singapore, uh -huh. but he's not active. He's very, very inactive, more or less, yeah. So what does it feel like? What does 95 feel like? All I can say after 95 years yeah. is life is what you make it. Oh. And Many a times people talk about various things, why they did not do what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's just up to you. Mm -hmm. And looking at my own example, from nothing, mm -hmm. I became what I am today. Yeah. Obviously it took so many, a lot of years. Yeah. But it shows clearly everyone mm. 
has a possibility. Mm. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody will, will make it. Yeah. The day when you start taking that every day is a challenge and you want to make the best of it. Mm -hmm. It's not who you are. It's your intentions. Ah. If you want to become someone, yes. you can. Did you ever see yourself getting here? You know, by in the way of your achievements, your accolades, your awards. So you started from nothing, but as you were, you know, going through your journey, did you ever imagine, was it ever in your mind that those, those uh, blessings, those gifts would be on your path? No, no. Uh, uh, normally you don't imagine of that nature. But okay. the point is that when you start growing and things fall at your, at your what you call it, at your doorstep, uh -huh. then you start thinking that, yes, people are noticing. Mm. And when I can say who I am, but it's the others who should say what I am. Yes. And that automatically moves. Uh, the, the other day when I was asked about my last award mm -hmm. I received of peace, mm -hmm. I could not go to Philippines, Manila. Mm -hmm. So I sent my granddaughter, who is now at Harvard, to collect on my behalf. Uh, and an award of peace, world peace, is just something which is very, very rare. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was thinking that, hey, how many awards? And I was very surprised that it's approximately 140 awards to date. Wow. Plus, I've not counted how many doctors I've got. Yes. I've not counted how many chairmanship I have. <laughs> Those are different. Yes. But people who notice you from mm. outside, mm. to whom you even don't know, yeah. And when they acknowledge you and say, well, that's a man I would like to really decorate. So to me, I think that it's up to us, really. And the determination of wanting to make it mm -hmm. is very important yes. in life. Yes. So, so let's speak from that last sentence, the determination of wanting to make it. So earlier on, you said you started from nothing. Could you please paint that nothing picture for us? Well, uh, my, my, my father went for three vernacular. He could not speak, read, or write English. My mother was illiterate. Hmm. And my two elder brothers, one had gone up to senior, uh, not completed primary education, yeah. another just reached up to senior Cambridge, but did not complete. Now, in that condition, did I have any chance that we will be any different than them? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, obviously, from my father, my brother was, at least can speak, read, write English. He can converse, he can be somebody who wants to, at some feel, feeling that he can become someone. Yeah. But the point is that there is no timetable and there is no position which is earmarked that no, I, it's what you want to be. Mm. If you want to be someone, then you got to be at it. And to me, I have seen that my life from almost nothing and slowly and slowly it built up both the education-wise, both my work-wise, yeah. both my uh, influence, both my social work, it all gave a, one after the other a boost and to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, many a times it's very difficult, but when you're at it, there's no way of looking back, mm -hmm. just want at it, yeah. go at it, yeah. and I think you can, you can. And this is a classical example mm -hmm. from nothing to something. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So the struggle when you were starting out, what was that like? 
and at what point did you know something has turned? Because you know it's it's like the way an aeroplane is taxiing and then now it takes off. So there's a lot of work here, but then at some point it turns. What was that for you? You see, what happened is that uh, uh, in our early life, uh, the Second World War started, mm -hmm. and it was when I was about 10 or 11 years old. Okay. And that made quite a bit of the Asian families worried because there was an agreement between Germany and Italy and they signed a pact. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to conquer Africa from Somalia. So, uh, the Asian community was really panicked. And we were all sent out to India, except our, well, our older people went away to India, women went away to India, and children went away to India. Yeah. Only able bodied people continued our business here. Yeah. Now, that totally gave an opening of completely new idea, new thought. I still remember when I reached mm -hmm. Mumbai in the boat, what we had seen in Kenya was one or two two-story buildings. Okay. And the minute the ship was coming nearby, you could see tall buildings, big boulevards. As we went nearby, as we went closer, we started looking at it, the double-decker buses running, the house, big houses. And then we looked at the people who looked just like us, mm. just like me. And it just, the first challenge hit us. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's the difference between them and us? We look same. There must be something which we don't have. We don't know. And that made us very clearly a, a major challenge in life. Hey, if this can happen here, then why it cannot happen with us? And then we went from there to first time to London to go to New York to study. And what we saw in London again shook our head. Hey, my God, where are we living? Where is Kenya? Where is India? Where is UK? And the day when we landed in New York and in 63rd floor hotel, and the time limit was very different, get up at 2 o'clock in the morning and see, my God, what is there with these people that we don't have it? Yeah. And that challenges, continuous challenges, hey, it's up to us. Yeah. They're no different than us. Maybe they're whiter mm. and we are brown. But then what happened to India? How come that that ten story, twelve story building, that tram running, that car running, all over the place? So what's wrong with us? Yeah. And so it made us to believe that it's human endeavor, human effort, determination, that yes, I want to be someone. The journey is never easy. Every step you take, there will be hindrance. Because it's going up on the mountain. And as the air goes less and less with oxygen, the ab amount of stress that you have to really put in your life yeah. is not easy. Yeah. To my way of looking, it's very clear, everyone mm -hmm. can be Manu Chandarya. Is how much do you judge yourself? Mm. And how much limit you put to yourself? Mm -hmm. If I put it here, Yes, I'll cross it. Okay. But if I put it here, then I've got to really 
hard work yes. to really come up to here. But this will go probably to here. Because this never remains constant. Mm -mm. It mm. moves. Because you're comparing yourself with successful people. Yes. So I think that the many a times people just do not see their own potential. I never saw my potential. Oh. But I knew that if he can do it, my God, why can't I do it? That the, the spirit, yes, a drive that you need, yes, a vision that you want to become someone, yeah, and yeah, you can do it. So, what I hear you speak to, correct me if I'm wrong, is mindset. So, the mindset that we each hold individually is what helps to determine exactly what you said I can go this far, I can reach here, I can reach here, I can reach here. It's, it's all mindset, no? Mindset. Absolutely the mindset. The mindset should be really trained in a manner to be bigger, huh. better. And bigger and better is not only the answer, uh -huh. but to remain human. Oh, that's good. Because on your road of growth, you see people remaining behind. You also see the people in pain. And unless and until you grow together of realizing that there is a there's a pain, there's a happiness and there's a pain. And that realization is very important. Yes. Yeah. So you speak to something really important. What you find happening now is so there's expectation of yes, I'm growing every day. And then circumstances, life happens, the pain comes, something comes to stop, maybe to delay, and naturally we give up. Every life has got fallbacks. But to win over, to get over, without losing the mission, you can become very upset one day and say, no, I don't want to be bothered. But the mission is to reach there. So I think that that only time, circumstances, and your your ability will teach you how to move. Hmm. And and all successful people that I've seen in my life hasn't started the day one with success. They failed, and they got up, and they failed again, and then they got up again. Yeah. But that capacity yeah. of continuous effort, whether you you fall, get up. Now, many a times people just decide, no, don't want to get up. Sorry, I fell down three times. I don't want to get up. That attitude means negativity mm. in life it must not be there. Yes. You want to go, you will walk, you will run. If necessary, you will fly. But you want to be there. And I think that there is, that all our younger people must have this in, a, in a, their mind. Yes, I heard Manu Chandarya. Manu Chandarya was not any different than what am I today. If he can make it, why can't I make it? Challenge yourself. Maybe you might not become Manu Chandarya 100%, but you can become 50%, 70%. The question is, you go to drive. You ask somebody else to drive, then you are, you are going at their speed. Hmm. If I have to drive, then I want to reach that point as fast as possible, then my whole chemistry, yeah. mental chemistry, my physical chemistry, everything will move me faster. Right. So I think that it is mostly is up to you. Yes. And when you really come back again, same thing. Yes, you can do it. Yes, it's up to you. Yes, you have a capacity. 
how to cultivate the capacity yes yes you try huh. you fail huh. doesn't make difference get up again try fail get up again and i think that that's how life is all about less failures gives you faster boost but that doesn't mean that people who have failed many a times that they cannot be up hmm. they can be up they can yeah 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 hmm. because it's 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 an it's an what you call it it's a, it's a journey journey, journey yes yeah. yes uh, can you share with us maybe a moment in your life when you you fell or you know you some of your valley moments i like to call them valley moments in your life and and how you overcame that C- can you give us maybe a, a story around that well you know when we came uh, when i came back from states yes uh, we were running a company with just 40 people in mombasa manu- manufacturing sufuria aha uh-huh. uh, the plant was as old as i was since i was born mm-hmm. it was not belonging to us all the time but when i came and i joined that and i i thought to myself that i've come over here i am i've done my first degree in india i did my engineering degree in america i did my masters in america and here i am I could be employed as a chief engineer anywhere. Here I am with your uh, uh, qualification, mm-hmm. and I am sitting over here with forty people, and it's not only me. Yeah. My brother is also the same way. He's sitting the same place, and we never, um, well, we never thought that this is what is going to be. going to remain as it is uh-huh from the day one we made it possible that yes in 2 years time we want to become 100 people uh-huh we want to expand we want to find out ways and means we knew from school <laughs> we didn't have any experience yeah just wait from school But you keep on hitting yourself and say hey come on there is a better way and slowly slowly in two years time we became 100 people and in eight years time we had 800 people working and we'll come to discuss that so for now uh, we'll have to take a very short commercial break is that okay yes okay so we are having a an unbelievable conversation with Dr Manu Chandaria he's in, in his lovely residence Uh, we take a very quick commercial break. What's your story? We'll be back in just a little bit. You see, with time, everything changes. Yes. And you've got to be really ready for a change of tomorrow. If you are not ready, and you say that no, this is okay, that comfort you cannot afford. How have you been able to build a scandal-free reputation? reputation is the name and the name must be protected all the time as i told you that success follows success failure always follows failure Welcome back from the break. This is what's your story. I'm Catherine Mwangi. We are having a conversation with Dr. Manu Chandaria. He is a business magnate. His heart is about people. He has established businesses in Africa, in the UK, in Europe, in the Americas. But um, you know, I'm just preempting everything for you which is completely unfair. So, why don't you just go back to the story so he can get to share it himself? No. it does not automatically happen uh-huh you got to put in a lot of effort you you fail you get up again but overall the growth kept on showing hey you're doing something right 
because you're not going like this way. You're going up like this. Yeah. And to me, that whole exercise of from 40 people to 100, from nothing really, very little, and to say, hey, now we are going to double ourselves or two and a half times ourselves, that attitude, that ambition, that wanted to become someone was the main force. This fail, don't worry, get try again, try other. And we proved that we can do it in two years' time. It took a lot of effort. Yeah. To make from 40 to 42 was a difficult, difficult, but to make it to 100 was very difficult. Mm -hmm. But then, when we knew that we can do it, every year we found it just going up, 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 up to 800 in eight years' time. Now, that gave us a fundamentally first, hey, you can do it. Mm -hmm. There's all the possibilities. Why 800? Why only 800? Mm -hmm. Why not in two countries? Oh, wow. Why not in three countries? Why not in five countries? And so maybe 800, you cannot make it 1,000 here. But you can certainly start somewhere else, another, another 100, 100 people working over there. Yeah. And so in first five years, after 800 people, we moved to Tanganyika, we moved to Uganda, we moved to Ethiopia, we moved to Zambia. And in five years' time, we had five places. We were stretched like this. Because what you got the money is only for here. Here we are stretched. Yeah. The language was different. You go to Ethiopia, the language is different. Yes. You you go to Zambia was then the richest country at that time. The style of doing things was very different. So everything said and done, it all required so much of attention mm. and so much of ingenuity. And that ingenuity proved mm -hmm. in five years' time we became mm -hmm. a, what you call a Pan African. Pan African, yes. 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 Now, did did we realize that in forty people working in nineteen fifty, that by nineteen sixty five we'll be in five five countries? No. But the issue was yes, we want to do it. And why only Africa? Oh. So we opened up in UK. After a few years, we sent our people to Singapore. After a few years, we sent our people to Toronto. To keep on expanding. Yes. And everywhere where we went, it's a new environment. It's a new thinking, new people, new ideas and attitudes. Yeah. But what we were and what we can do, we kept on repeating them. Some places could not be repeated. What we were and we wanted to be was a possibility. Yeah. And the second thing that we had a joint family. Uh -huh. So the main power was not an issue. One Chandari will be in Tanganyika, another Chandari will be in Ethiopia, another Chandari will be in, in, in uh, Uganda, one will be in Zambia. So we found that it was not, it was not impossible. Mm -hmm. And we also knew that what we were doing was the basic necessity of every country. So we repeated. And we established ourselves immediately because we knew the trade. Mm -hmm. We knew the markets. 
all we did is just went in and started manufacturing. Now the 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 basis is that what wants the vision that not only Kenya but all our neighboring countries. Yes. Not only our neighboring countries, but other parts of Africa. Yeah. Uh, not only Africa. Let's go to Europe. Let's go to Southeast Asia. Let's go to Americas. That your experimentation and your capabilities of becoming someone and establishing there against all the odds that you had gave us even much more. Speak to us. Go. Do it. Yes, you can do it. Hmm. And I think that the whole growth process uh, is from 1950 to become 800 people in one country to become in five countries, it took 15 years. But then in another 15 years, we were in worldwide. Yeah. Because all we were repeating the same ideas, same thoughts, same capacity. Maybe it was difficult in some other country, but overall, we were going in the right direction. And we were successful in one, successful in second. Then we thought that, yes, maybe we are, we, what we are doing is the right thing. Mm. Mm. And I think that the, and as I said, that the family men who, the manpower was also good yeah. with us. Education was good with us. Our capacity to really prove. Uh. And then when you go to another country, they know and they see what we are doing in Kenya. So, once you are in two or three countries, it automatically solves your capacity possibilities in other countries. Because they say, oh my God, they can run in Kenya, they run in Tanzania, they are running in Uganda, how come they can run in, in, in Zambia? Yeah. yeah. Automatically. So I think that the 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 vision and wanting to grow and wanting to become someone and becoming a large entity. Yes, were we cut out for it? No, we were not cut out for it. We learned? Yes, we learned. As we went in, we kept on learning. We made mistakes, again improve on it, we get back again. But success is always very, very, once you are successful, then it automatically sells you uh, over all. Yes. Was there any pressure back then to keep up with the times, to keep up with the trends? You know, like in this day now, um, if you're not on this lane, then, you know, the times have gone, so you have to always keep innovating. So did, did your businesses, did your companies go through that? No, no. You see, with time, everything changes. Yes. And you've got to be really ready for a change of tomorrow. If you're not ready and you say that, no, this is okay, that comfort you cannot afford. You know tomorrow is going to be different. Tomorrow is going to be different in a newer country. What is going to happen in Kenya is not necessarily going to happen in Uganda. Yeah. Yeah. So availability and acceptability that yes, we know it is not going to be the same. But we will do it. We will face it. That, that absolute understanding that yes, knowing very well, and yet we will do it. And that is the one major factor where you never felt uncomfortable. Uh -huh. 
because your mental attitude, your planning is always, and then success after the success. You know, you, and even one little failure somewhere doesn't make difference. Mm. Uh, like Burundi, we were, we were in Burundi, mm. and all of a sudden the, the coup took place yeah. and everything gone. They never gave us back, and we never went to Burundi again. But similarly, in Uganda, they took over everything, but they gave back to us. In Ethiopia, they took away everything, and they didn't give us anything. But still, we went and, and recreated again. The point is that the circumstances are not what you will never be able to dictate. It's what comes in the, your way, you must be able to find the way out of it. And accept whatever is necessary to accept it. And so flexibility in, in doing businesses, flexibility in accepting individual countries, their political system, their thinking, their values, are all a possibility. But then, once you're successful in four or five of them, then you think that you can certainly do it. Yes. And because you are successful in five, the six country would all automatically, oh, they know the business. They're not only in Kenya. They're already, in the, they're not in the, they're not the new first country that they're coming to. They've already got in five countries, or they're already in seven countries. So I think that that, that your own uh, uh, your own reputation mm. makes it much more easier. And to build a reputation is is what they see, what the others will see, mm. that creates a reputation. How have you been able to build a scandal-free reputation? Many a times, success and a good reputation is very difficult to maintain. Okay. If you can maintain that reputation, and many a time to maintain that reputation, you might accept a loss also somewhere. But if you are willing not to compromise your reputation, then I think that automatically it reflects. It's just like a mirror. That if the reputation is good, yeah. people will automatically come along. Yes. And I think that they have done it. Wherever we have gone, the, the, we might have a banking problem in Uganda. But then the bank manager in Uganda will say, oh my God, they're operating in five countries. So they will. Yeah. So it's, it's, I think reputation. Yes. And to maintain the quality of that reputation. Many a time people take shortcuts and try to forget about that reputation. To us, no. Reputation is the name, and the name must be protected all the time whether we make the money or whether we lose the money. But reputation-wise, nobody will come and say, point a finger. And I think that there are basic principles in life that we, we follow and which is natural. And I think that it has worked out well. Yes, yeah. yes. So all along, what you, you have said several times about the vision, the mission, going somewhere. So all along for you, what was that mission? Well, the mission is the growth. The growth. The okay. growth. Okay. Capacity you have. Now, either you keep it in your pocket and just sit <laughs> and do nothing, or you go out over there and do something about yes. it. Yes. And to me, if we have been successful in 10 countries, what stops us to become 
successful in 30 countries. Nothing. All, every country will have different legislation, different style of working, different, uh, uh, different currencies. But at the end of the day, the, the medium could be different, but the product remains the same. There's a buyer, there's a seller, there's a manufacturer, I, would say, I sell to somebody, and there's a buyer. That doesn't change, whether you're in the States or whether you're here. Yeah. So I think that to us uh, that reputation of our own industry, which we know, mm. Sufriyas, we know, 15 countries are Sufriyas. Roofing, we know, 20 countries we are in roofing. So there is nothing that stops us. Yes, it might be different roofing in London mm -hmm. than what is roofing in Nairobi. Yeah. Maybe they might want double-decker roofing where there be the heat will not go, the cold will not go inside the house and neither the heat will go outside. So we'll make roofing like that, double deck. There'll be a, a steel sheet, there'll be a um, polystyrene or polyurethane, then there's another sheet, mm -hmm. nothing will go through. So it's, it, it, to, 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 to start doing things what is needed in that country. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But for basic commodities, nobody has been able to replace a sufria in Africa. We can still have the with the handles, we can still have with the saucepans, but still, seventy percent souvenirs. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and as you have been scaling and expanding, uh, you spoke earlier about the importance of not having a fat head. So how have you been able to still stay grounded, even as you've been hitting, you know, success milestones? Uh, now, uh, that's an issue of philosophy. Uh -huh. It's not an issue of a business. In philosophy, we, 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 we believe in, you know, we are James. Mm -hmm. We believe in not hurting others. And when we say we don't hurt, means we don't hurt physically, by words, and even mentally. I don't think bad about you. To have that kind of philosophy in which you, you survive and you've grown up, that gives a great possibility for us of to forgive and forget. Many a times you, you forgive, but you don't forget. It's here, forgive, forget. Help, extend your hand wherever you can. All these are the principles of the religion. Not that we are religious people, but in the family, the ideology has always been there that if somebody comes in, share. There's no way that, oh, I eat and you sit. There's no way. So I think that the whole basic of their own religion philosophy. Yeah. And number two, the basic standards of good business. And and, and big standard of good business is to remain consistent. Mm. Today you make a good profit here and tomorrow you change your style, doesn't work. It has to work whether you make profit whether it doesn't make profit. Yeah. You still have to be in the same standard. And I think that, that growth itself, um, as I told you, that success follows success. Failure always follows failure then. So you, you become much wider, not business-wise, mentally, what I was 50 years back, and what I am today, is a very different Manu Chandari. Yes. Because you are exposed. More you get exposed, more 
issues keep on coming. And more you have to find out solutions for those. So you become more adaptable to so many little, little things for this country, for that country, for that person. It, it's a flexibility that you grow. Yeah. And I think that once you are known for good, then there might be 1% or 2% of people who might want to paint the wrong color on you. Yeah. But normally, reputation speaks for itself. I don't have to go and speak. Mm. It speaks for itself. Yes, yes. That is profound. So when did you retire from, you know, active corporate life? Three, three years ago. Three, years, three ago. years ago? Yeah, yeah. Wow, so in your 90s? Yeah, uh, 990. Normally I could have retired at 85. Yeah. But uh, continued at 90. I was only both, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, no. uh, yeah. And then I retired, I said, now no more. I don't want to go to the office. Yes. I stay at home. And I got lots of other work. Yeah. Especially the social work. Uh-huh. The charitable work. Yes. That I do. Keeps them very busy. Hasn't that been inspiring for you? I mean, for me, I'm just there. If you've noticed, maybe I've only asked four questions because he's just this river of living water that's just flowing so much wisdom, so much life. And like I said at the start of the show, I had a feeling this would be a two-part series because, hey, 95 years old, completely successful. He has helped so many. He still continues to do the same. So we can only continue with this next week, same time, same channel. That's Wednesday, 8 p.m. on KTN Home. Until then, catch this episode right after this on YouTube, our YouTube channel. And if you have any feedback to give, 22151 SMS is free of charge. And also our social media platforms. Next week, I, I wonder what we're going to ask him. But I, all I know is that it's going to be good. So I hope you tune in then. Until then, take care of yourselves. With my brothers, we went to our father and said that, Papa, how about setting up a Chandaria Foundation? He said, you've lived too long in the United States. Oh. We've got a big hole here. And we've got 36 people at home. Fill it. Then talk about foundation. After five years, when we become 400 people, he came back. And he said, I think that that's a good idea. Is that 10% of my company shares for Chandaria Foundation. <laughs>